Okay, we're recording, and now we go live on uh, on Facebook so that it can uh, have us on this. Uh, there we go, and we're up and running, and everybody's, uh, we're all ready to go here uh, with some people who are waiting, who have just uh, uh, signed on, and let me see here. Let me go admit all so far. Okay, and that will bring us Paul Levin, and it will bring Charlene Salas and uh, uh mike chisholm better known as candace uh, yeah i'm sorry about that hey everybody len lafrisco hello len hello hello wait a minute hold on a second let me get your audio up a little more i don't know it's up too much there we go. just there we go. hello to uh um let's see edward berger that's right that's our sound check yeah <laughs> to make sure turn your mic down just a little bit there if you can oh uh, let's see who who else do we have here oh this is it for now where's marjorie oh yeah here come more people i see here oh i think that's what you do there comes marjorie miller here comes mandy o'brien here comes charlie wallace as they all attempt to get on here there we are. hello marjorie how are you hello, hello. i haven't seen you all day you've been fighting yeah various people uh charlie wallace hello and mandy o'brien is still trying to connect her audio and her video and so on and so forth <laughs> this is good for a start today uh how y'all doing good. Good. okay um, um marjorie is has had quite a day today uh -oh. the, the, I, the best one was fedex which was supposed to deliver me something saturday then said it was a delay. They delivered today. Then said it was a delay. They'll deliver tomorrow. Wait, wait. They left you a tag on the. Wait, door. I, I didn't get to that. I'm just talking about the telephone stuff. So I had to go to the post office and coming back, there's a tag on our bell system that said, "Sorry, you weren't here." So when oh, I called good. the number, they said, "Well, you have an incorrect address." So we do have an option of two two addresses, but it's the same place, either Seventh Avenue or Adam Clayton Powell Junior Boulevard. Um, so I called them. I said, "How could it be an incorrect address? They left the tag right on the mailbox. They were here." <laughs> yeah, they didn't have the right address. That's why they left the tag on the right address. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and and then earlier today she was having trouble with a uh, we her business every month pays for her dental insurance well, pays for everything i have to i pay and then i su submit copies of the payments yeah but it turned out that this one company that they stopped <laughs> doing for dental has kept sending bills to them for her for alex and i yeah at my checking account did you get that settled no, I haven't spoken to a person. Everybody, they connect me to someone else, to someone else. And I'm going to go to the bank tomorrow and tell them not to. It's maddening. It's just it's maddening. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes, Paula. Yeah. Well, to, to continue the, the, the subject of, of life is hard. I just spent an hour trying to figure out how to send my granddaughter, who's going to Girl Scouts over night camp, an, an email. Because the the and and I swear to God it's not my fault because the 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 um the, the directions are so were so complicated that I um what can I say it, it, life is difficult I finally life figured it out sucks. today it sucks now is it because I've, we're decided, it, hmm? Wait, I've, I've, decided, I've, I've decided that being an adult all it is is doing this kind of stuff you know it's always something it's always something. <laughs> Well, we're and, computers and, and supposed to, we're computers supposed to improve our lives, right? <laughs> rather than complicate it. I mean, when she calls somebody at a company, and they, I mean, I even had the same problem today with a hospital who was I was supposed to give them my uh, information of like my insurance, and I gave them my supplemental insurance. So she put it in. She says it isn't responding. <laughs> well, it's you know, not your I, fault. You are covered. I'm covered. You know. I mean. But, and then Marjorie has all this stuff. The only thing Marjorie doesn't understand is she has no tact whatsoever. <laughs> uh, I, I wake I up every morning, she's in here in the office, and I hear her yelling 
<laughs> and I'm yelling to an automated person on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I put well, a fucking person on there. <laughs> Why shouldn't they suffer? <laughs> yeah, and then you finally get somebody, and they're like in uh, in uh, uh, India, and they don't know what's happening. You know, they they. What? I don't know. I have to talk to my superior. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks less English than I do. He sounds Russian. Oh, hand up I don't know. I would call Russia too. We don't. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I was just going to uh, say I had an uh, ordeal this morning too with the um, IRS, and it oh, took me over twenty uh, minutes to find a flipping phone number, and then it took like an hour for a person to get the, on it. Yeah. Ooh, oh, it oh yeah. If you ever try to call the IRS or Social Security, Social Security, call you call yeah. them, you'll be waiting for at least an hour, two hours. How the do you best know? time to call? Wait, 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 wait. Mandy raised her hand in agreement. You, <laughs> what do you do? You get social security <laughs> from well, my mom. What? I'm telling me, my mother. Oh, she okay. said the worst thing to call social yeah. security. Yeah, they, and you would think that they have a reputation for being the worst person to call, and yet they've done nothing about it. Nothing. Right. <laughs> with a lot They're of companies. Companies. I mean, they probably go to parties and they say, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm over at Social Security. Oh, well, I can never get online to them. And they never pay attention to that. Yeah. Yes, Paula. Uh, it reminds me of, of uh, Lily Tomlin playing the, the, the part of the, of, the, uh, of the phone company. But, uh, right. yeah, saying, saying we're, we're, we're Bell of wherever. We don't care. Right. <laughs> it's amazing. It's just amazing. And, and and this is in an age of computers where it all should be easy. Yeah. Lord, I, 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 then they tell me to give them the tag number. So I, I say it. And of course, the, the not real person, the, you know, the, he'd say, I don't understand that. So I type it in on the phone and she says, it doesn't exist. I should put a fucking agent on the phone. <laughs> I even had a, had my lawyer today not spell my last name correctly on a phone <laughs> we were sending out. You know, and and uh, the other person on that thing was Marjorie, and it just said Marjorie, <laughs> Marjorie Schwarzman, which she's not. I wish she were because half the time we wouldn't have this confusion. You know something that goes back to the days when women were treated as animals, as Boy, stuff. That, that was great times, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, where, where where you cook the meals, you didn't order out for them. <laughs> Here we go. Times, times have changed. Times have changed. But anyway, so she's yelling at these people, and I go, "Don't yell at them." Because you're not, they, they're just going to get, she wonders why she suddenly goes, hello, is anybody there? Hello? hello, is anybody there? That's the other thing I hear her yelling and screaming. And it's because she's been yelling and screaming at them and they just go, I don't care about her. And they, you know, they hang up on it. I just remember that, I just remember the name of the Lily Tomlin character it was Ernestine. Yeah. Yes, right? yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway. <laughs> Yeah, you know. that's a good bit. And then, then there's another thing Marjorie has done in her life, which is, uh, uh, which uh, kind of it somewhat pissed me off. <laughs> what married you? No. <laughs> <laughs> we have a guy who calls the nighttime show named Phil. I think a lot of you are aware of him. Uh, he is a uh, he is a difficult person, to say the least. But I let him on, and I and I uh, in, in, invoke his ability to call that show the show because he has a different political opinion than I do. And, and just he takes about, over the show. Wait, wait, hold on again. Let me finish. <laughs> so we're out doing our little thing in the park the other day, and she starts going to a rant about Phil. It so was rant. She well, just well. she just said, "Don't let him on all the time." Yeah, well, she yeah. was also a little nastier than that. She had a few well, nice well, right. things to say about him. And uh, now he's never going to call again. <laughs> Which, I mean, some people are applauding. Right? Well, you told me yeah. that you have some of your best shows when he doesn't call. 
No, I didn't say that. I said yes, we had did. we had a good show the next night after without we, him. Without him. <laughs> yeah. But you know, go ahead. Anybody here you want to lose me? <laughs> <laughs> Have them never call again. How about going after Mike? Mike's a Canadian. He'll just apologize. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I would. And I, I still want to know what's in the FedEx box that's coming to Marjorie's place. My phone broke. No, it didn't oh. break. It didn't break. It dropped on the floor and broke. No, well, it didn't break. You the, you crack the case and it very it looks really nice too. It's a nice design. Nice design <laughs> as the case cracked. And she didn't we didn't know it was cracked. We thought it was the cover for the uh for the phone. And we found out when we went to the Apple store that oh your phone's cracked. <laughs> if you held it up, they probably couldn't see it because the quality on uh, on uh, you, um, uh, what is this on uh, uh, Zoom is uh, not that great. But anyway, so we went down. He says your your case is broken. We can replace it for you uh, the case. And she said how much? And they said and he looked he looked it up. Five hundred and fifty dollars. No, but then we called. Then we called. Um, was it AT and T? Yeah. Yeah, then we called the phone guy and he said we were insured. You're insured. But you're insured and had to pay $125 or something. Right. Yeah. Something like that. Well, that's not exactly what I call insured. And I have to mail it back, otherwise they'll charge me. Well, the thing is, they wanted to charge your 550 bucks for the case. And I'm thinking to myself, that phone only cost a thousand or eleven hundred. So what's not if you take the case away from that phone, is there only like five hundred dollars worth of stuff in there? Well, there's not. There's you know, nowhere near five hundred dollars worth. What? I don't think there's anywhere near five hundred dollars worth of stuff in there. Oh no! Oh, not no, not in your wildest dream. No, it's a it's a few little diodes and things. I think they figured my out photos and my iPhone are worth a lot. <laughs> there really I, I i just i just you know i wonder with all this technology and everything why we none of this like for instance i had to fill out a form today that we have to send in to the uh, rental people to complain about our landlord we're okay. back in court yeah oh, because no. he because he's trying to charge us the full amount rather than the amount on the lease but when you do a renewal the renewal is supposed to be based, based on, on the original lease. What you're paying, yeah. And, and so, you know, we're doing this 507, uh, $507 cents. cents a month deal. And that's the legal rent on this place, according to the judge who invoked it. And also an appellate court that, that held, unanimously. unanimously upheld the decision. All right. And they, these guys are saying, well, we're still appealing to the court of appeals to see blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, come on, how much longer are you not going to live up to it? And the fact is, I'm not going to sign a lease renewal that says, an illegal it, lease it, renewal. That says it's $2,225 a month. Yeah. If that's okay. not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be the amount listed on the lease. Because what we're this paying a, now. Because this is a lease renewal. This is not a inception of a lease or anything like that. Simply the re 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 lease renewal. These are the guys, by the way, that threatened the judge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we never told you that part of the story. Oh, are you got allowed, told that. That's are, they allowed to raise, are they allowed to go up by 5% or something a year or every couple of years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that we're willing to pay. You know, we're all for that. We're both but the managing money. guy wrote, wrote to our judge. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. We didn't get to that yet. Oh. Uh, the, but the point is, better story. You're my wife, shut up. <laughs> uh, 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 no, what happened was, is that when the judge was determining, you know, whether it was what, what the what it was all going to be about, you know, and how the how the case was going to turn out, the landlord either calls him or writes him. I can't remember which. And threatens him. We know where you live. We'll have you followed. We know where you live. We'll have you followed. Uh, I, 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 we can get your job. 
He's a judge. What get what job? <laughs> you know, and so in, the final, out, in, in the final in the final decision, he takes puts the paragraph in there saying, in the in the uh, sake in the sake of transparency, here's what happened. Mm. He talks about how this guy threatened him. Mm. Okay, so that's in the decision. So of course, when they go to the appellate court, they look at this and they go, "Screw him! He's threatening a judge." Right. You know? so, and they unanimously said yeah. no. So, so I mean, these people are just horrible. I mean, who, horrible. who in a case threatens a judge? You just yeah. don't. It, it's it, it's unthinkable. I mean, if I knew I could win a case that way, maybe I'd do it. But. <laughs> I didn't know you rented from Donald Trump's uh, you know, right, company. Right. Yeah. There you go. Well, wow. you know, I've, oh, the, trouble, the trouble is that, that uh, landlords in this town pretty much are all corrupt. You know, I mean, maybe some small ones, nice little mom and pop landlords are okay. But these big companies, man, they are just hateful. Just and the guy that, that owns this building also has like another dozen or so buildings around New York. Yeah, and he doesn't even really take good care of this building. This is a beautiful building. No, and this building. is a landmark building. And and uh, if if I owned it, I would take great pride in it, you know? And I it's would make landmark. sure that it was looking good and everything was fixed and, you know, but, you know, there are cracks in the mosaic tiles in the lobby, you know. All kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. So, but anyway, so I had to fill out these forms today because you can appeal to the Department of Housing that you were given a lease that was not based on the old lease. And that's against the law. You you have to absolutely use the old lease as the starting point. So if you're going to renew a lease, you renew it at that amount them. of money. You don't renew yeah. it at a different amount of money. But if I don't pay, uh, don't uh, send this back by the end of uh, September, uh, they can then go to court and try and get me evicted. So we're just filing all this stuff to make sure that if they try to do that. So we we're have, back with the lawyers. We have a paper trail. So we're back to lawyers again. It's back to lawyers. It's the price you pay for the rent you've got. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah. And so far, my rent here is now $10,000 a month. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. It's, it's, it's part of the cost I pay for this. Plus but it's just the angst that it brings you. You know, it's like we're living with this. How many fucking years now? I would like to settle into this apartment and feel that it's mine. Yes. Here, you know, I mean, it's owned by a lot landlord, but he can't throw me out. You know, let yeah, me, we're we're yeah. protected. And Plus, yeah. if they really have to go, we're seniors. Well, I that doesn't work. That it does. No, I looked it up. It doesn't. If you make if you make less than fifty thousand dollars a year, so and you know how much is your social security? How much is my social security and my SAG after a pension? <laughs> yeah. So, gee, I was hoping we could work by now so I could add some more money into my SAG after a pension, but I suppose. That's <laughs> <important>. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, how are all of you doing? How how you doing, Paula? How's that? Uh, uh, well, um, ap apart from trying to just send an email to my granddaughter, I'm pretty good. It took me an hour, and uh, everything I did apparently was wrong. And I, uh, yeah. none it was of just, this, it was just a bad it was a bad website. You see, the I internet, used to think I used to think it was my fault, and I didn't know what I was doing. The, the it's internet not. and the and computers are a Thing that we have come out with to make our lives better. <laughs> yeah. Name me one thing and one way it has made our life better. We get to talk to you, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> right now. There's another thing against it. Okay. <laughs> the worst part. The worst part is you're talking to an animated voice. You know? yeah. <laughs> No, but I mean, it, it's just, it, it, they have computers in front of them, and all, the only answer they can give you is what's on that computer. It's all a script. Yeah, they have scripts. And if they have to go 
outside that, you know, it used to be a time when a person could take their own individual initiative to do nope. something. You remember the guy at uh, at Amazon about 10 years ago when something went wrong? He said, well, we'll send you a new one and uh, keep the one you got. Yeah. You know, and he had that decision to make. He doesn't have that decision to make anymore. He has to go by the numbers, by the book, and whatever. And it's just, you know, and you know what I saw yesterday on, on TV that really, you know, it, it, I have known this all along, but it's gotten out of hand. How many of you have subscription services? Every one of you, right? Of course. How many of you have had that price go up in the last year? Of course. There we go. See? I mean, come on. You know, I mean, I know you're maybe having troubles with your little company, but it's not our fault. How about everything else? My PG and E, my electric bill is is astronomical now. Oh, gasoline prices are going back up now. Our our monthly price on electricity during the summer, when we have the air conditioners on, goes up to about six hundred dollars a month. Oh, you're kidding! That's as much as what mine is, and I have oh, really? a really house. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have the size of a house. Yeah, that's true. Yours is about as big as my house. But we only air condition the other. One half only, of only we only have two air conditioners on right. at the most at a time. At the same time. Otherwise, the electricity blows in the apartment. <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah, mine was five seventeen or five twenty. I don't know what it was, but yeah, but and I have a pool pump that runs. So, well, I mean, a pool pump is it is that does it use up a lot of electricity? Yeah, it, it's yeah, kind of a lot, and wow. it's been over here this month. Yeah, if you didn't have the pool pump, how much would it cost? Three dollars a month. Yeah, eighteen dollars. <laughs> huh? uh, probably it's probably a couple hundred dollars for that. So maybe down in the threes. Mm -hmm. How about you? How about you, uh, uh, Brian? You live in the area. Hot area. How yeah, much? I don't have a pool like Len. I could just hop in and cool off right away. Yeah, but not having a pool. How much is your electric bill up? Uh, it's right here. I don't pay it. This gets automatically paid. Yeah, it may be automatically paid, but you should <laughs> <know> how <laughs> much it is. Paying it. <laughs> Everything's just numbers now. We don't write checks anymore. I don't make any money. Just a number. And then you pay with a number <laughs> on the credit card. You pay a number and a number and a number. There's nothing. There's no money anymore. Wait a minute. And you no, have nobody's accepting money anymore either. You yeah. have an envelope to mail to them? Uh, four seventy two. Four seventy two envelopes. That's it's on the computer. Yeah. yeah. Can't you pay pay that by computer? It is. Yeah. It's taken. Yeah. This this is a. Well, this the envelope out of my account. So it's just the envelope they say. I, yeah. I I work for a bunch of numbers. Those numbers go into my account, <laughs> and then numbers get taken out from <laughs> me, from my insurance, from the house, the mortgage, and then I end up with numbers that I can buy something else if I. Uh, numbers. <laughs> there's no money anymore there's no no, no money I, anymore <clears throat> it, this is uh, this is our uh, uh, this is america's version of yeah. bitcoin i, I, put, I got, Alex, you're right you're absolutely I got, right i got 300 dollars cash because i went to a swap meet to buy some cadillac parts I end up not buying those Cadillac parts, and the, that three hundred dollars sat in my wallet for the longest time. Yeah, because I have no use for cash. Well, I yeah. keep a lot of money around, uh, <laughs> so that when I want to buy something, like an electronic or something, I can, instead of using my taking money out of my account and everything, I can pay it with cash, right? So I'll go down to some place like the Apple Store, buy something like an iPad, pull out. You know, nine hundred dollars in cash, and, they and don't we know don't know what to do with it. Do with it right? Yeah. They don't have change to give back. Yeah, God yeah. forbid they yeah. have to make change. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. just be careful if they've already pushed the cat the button, and then they have to figure out the the change by themselves. Right. Yeah. Oh, God forbid. That's they... painful. I've seen <laughs> That's that. That's a hard That's one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I went years ago. This was a couple of years ago. Not recently. I went to Best Buy and I had come from California and I had sold my car and I'd sold a bunch of, I had a bunch of cash. So I want to, want to buy a TV set and I want to pay cash for it. They were going crazy. They didn't know how to do it. 
<laughs> you know, who buys a TV set with cash? Well, <laughs> I do. Older people. <laughs> oh, not even older people. You know, I mean, I I think we should go back to cash. I think we should. Uh, I'm tired of banks because they've got your money and then they go belly up and then they've still got your money. Cash makes it real. You know, I mean, it, it makes it it makes it real. Everything right. else. Brian's right. There's just numbers. There's numbers in an account. The numbers go away. The numbers change. Marjorie and I are coming into a, uh, shall we say, significant amount of money. Yeah. Uh, that somebody left us. Okay. We'll open up a joint account. Uh, everybody probably knows who I'm talking about here. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. You don't have to keep repeating it. Anyway, the point is, the point is uh, that with that, the, the question is, uh, how do I find a place to put that money? Now, do I want to put it in my bank? Banks aren't that solid anymore. You know, mm -hmm. they go out of business. They have this problem. So I can't put more than, say, 2005, uh, uh, $25,000 $250, in a bank account. One account, right. Is that per account? Yes. Per yeah, account. Two yeah. accounts at the bank, each with $250,000 in them, then they're covered. Yes. Yes. It's not per bank. It's per, no, it's per account. Uh -oh. per account. But still. And the FDIC will tell you that nobody's ever lost a nickel um, through them. So no matter how much you have in there, they're going to help. They're going to take care of you. So yeah, if you need somewhere to hold $250,000. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm right here. <laughs> what I'm saying is, are there better? Darling never leaves the house. It'll be I safe there. Are there better places to put your money? I mean, beside Bitcoin. Don't uh, put it in Bitcoin. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't do that. No, no, no. But that, that, that thing will be former, former, you know, DJ Alex Bennett. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully we're all in your will. <laughs> <laughs> but the you know, the question is, the question is, where can you put money today? Where it's really under, under your mattress. Credit unions. Huh? Under credit, your mattress. Union. credit union. Yes, I agree with you. Wait a minute. Credit, make money wait, with it. Wait a minute. credit <laughs> unions don't go under. I've had the same credit union for 48 years. Wow. <laughs> it has not changed, has not been bought out, has not gone bankrupt or anything. Credit yep. unions are great. What are you holding? Patelco up credit at? union. That's where I go. Yeah. Where, where, where do you go? Patelco credit union. Now, Same thing. Tell, tell me about Charlie. this, because I've never thought about a credit union. Although people have told me that's not a bad bet. I mean, do they do they charge? If you don't want to make if you don't want to make a lot of money on your money, then you should just put it in a in a bank account or credit union. Yeah, yeah but we have to get two accounts. Well, that's fine. Well, what I love, what I love, it is they said, "Would you like when I first went to this bank? Would you like a a, a what, what do they call it? Like a, a, a account where it goes through a." a the company that uh, invests your money, right? Mm -hmm. You know, would you like that kind of account? No. Wait a minute. I said yes. So now here I've got, I, I had like $50,000 in my account. And I looked at the end of a month to see what the interest was. And it was $3.20. <laughs> oh my God. I'm That's going, boy, they're, they're, they're investing that money well for me. <laughs> <laughs> So I told him I don't want, and then I went under what was it, a couple thousand dollars or something, and they said, "Well, now we have to charge you for the account." Oh, and I'm going, "Get me off of this! I don't want this. You don't want the the uh, the money market <laughs> account? That's what it was. It was a money market. Money market, market yeah." And I said, "No, I don't. Well, but you make money off of that. Yeah, three dollars and twenty cents on fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> you know, if you got a, a person in your office staff will blow me." <laughs> but i mean it's ridiculous it's just ridiculous you know uh, uh am i am i a complainer yes 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 well you know there's other that have they call them high yield higher yield savings like american express i put a bunch of money in there because at least they pay five percent mm. well that's something I, mean, yeah. I remember, I know, am I wrong? But when I was a kid, you know, first of all, you, you got yourself a bank account. Why? Because the banks came to the schools and told all the kids here, you can have an account. 
Paul, we, do you remember PSFS for kids? Well, yeah. But anyway, so I used to get, I had a little, remember the past book you had? Yep. And every week I would go down and I would take uh, a little <clears throat> bit of my allowance, like $5. And I would go down to the bank and I put it in there and they would then write it in and then yep. they would like stamp it or do whatever they had to do. And yeah. after a while that built up into a lot of money. And that was, you know, that was the kind of banking, sweet, nice, fuzzy feeling banking that we used to have. And if you were really good, they gave you a toaster. <laughs> <laughs> they used to give me I never could figure out what banks had to do with making toast, but I'll buy it, you know, as long as it's free. And also, so every fifth grader's dream to have a brand new shiny toaster. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So, I mean, and that's the way I learned how banks work. Well, that's not the case anymore. Yeah. Know? And uh, I, it's just terrible what's happened to everything in America. And call me old, call me an old fart, but, you know, it bothers me, really bothers me. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's sad. Alex, then, may, I seg may I segue? Yes, segue, if you will, please. Speaking of speaking of sad things that happen in America, did you ever get a chance to work with Mr. Paul Rubens? No. You didn't? Okay. No, no. But uh, you might turn your mic a little louder. A little louder. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, Paul Rubens died today. Uh, you know, pretty, uh, he had a good career. Well, for a while. Well, except for, that, except for that little bump in the road. For a while. Just a little yeah. bump. Well, look, who hasn't masturbated in a porn theater? Right. <laughs> let me let me just say this. And I can and I can show him both hands. I can go on, on record as saying if you have a porn theater, you have to expect a certain amount of the clientele. Will yeah. masturbate because what else is porn made for? It isn't made because, oh gee, I wonder how this is going to come out. You know, no, yeah, you have the power. Is going to, you, no, we all know how it goes. You don't wonder how it comes out. You wonder how it goes in. That's how you wonder. <laughs> so, oh boy, you know, porn <laughs> is made is made for masturbation. <laughs> Mandy, Mandy, you didn't participate in uh, Alex's question. <laughs> did you raise you your away. hand? Did you raise your hand? No, she was away. Can you please repeat the question for Mandy? You, you queen of the castle. Can you, can you please repeat the question for Mandy? I said, how many people here have masturbated in a porn theater, or more specifically, <laughs> at porn? No, no. You said oh, how yeah. many people have not masturbated yeah. to porn in a theater, and I raised both hands, <laughs> and Mandy can raise any. Oh, there she goes. Okay. Well, because I was dealing with an IRS issue. <laughs> you were dealing with you were dealing with what? Oh, theater. Okay. She she's she's the only one working right now. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, but I'm I'm, I, I would, I'm hmm? listening. I'm listening, I promise. But but is that how they do it? Did they do it in popcorn boxes? Is that the whole thing? Is that I guess it's already lubricated because you got the Yeah, butter. I remember porn theater. I remember porn theater where they sold popcorn. And I went, geez. Uh, what? But how can you masturbate and eat popcorn at the same time? <laughs> Especially if you get a little mixed up, you're in trouble. Oh, oh, Alex, <laughs> for the, for the seat See, seat this is huh? well, so much for monetizing this show. <laughs> <laughs> I gave on, up on that a long time ago. <laughs> no, I mean, we're talking about Paul Rubens, right? Yeah. And he was a man who was found, he was arrested by Florida police who will arrest you for anything they can uh, for masturbating in a porn theater. And uh, after that, his career took a nosedive because he had a kid's show on television. Yeah. And you that's, can't have a kid's show and be found true. masturbating in a porn theater. Yeah, I think you could have any other show besides a kid's show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you've been doing some kind of, uh, he just, who, you know, would years call, ago, who would call the police on somebody then in the porn doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, here's something that I, that I 
was reminded of the other day by watching a documentary. You know who got busted for marijuana and spent two months in a prison in a jail? Robert Mitchum. Oh, Robert Mitchum. Oh. And after he got out, his career wasn't hurt one iota. He was with the RKO, and they just felt it was owned by Howard Hughes, and he went, eh, no biggie. My uh, my mom used to work at Saks Fifth Avenue in New York in the 50s. Yeah. And Robert Mitchum came in and fell in love with her, asked her out on a date. He was already married, I believe. But she, went out <laughs> to lunch with, she went out to lunch with him, and um, he could have been my dad. <laughs> Firm <laughs> was not in him. <laughs> Firm came from some other guy. I can't say. That. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she she knew everybody. She worked at Saks. Every star you know from the fifties, she sold something to. Do. Marilyn Monroe, uh, Frank Sinatra, the Queen uh, Mother, the Shah of Iran. I mean, it was unbelievable. What department was she in? Fine jewelry. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so I got a lot of guys going there, didn't you? <laughs> That's a way of, it's a way of saying to their wife, I'm sorry I had sex with your best friend. Yeah. That's so fun. What a fun fact. Oh, my God. Her stories are unbelievable. I could sit her down for hours. I remember that was my slogan for Vermont teddy bears. I I sold more Vermont teddy bears than anybody, including they were great them. teddy bears. I remember them. And and one of the ads one day I got on. I uh, it started the slogan, and it was the Vermont teddy giver of Vermont teddy bear, the teddy bear that says, "I'm sorry, I had sex with your girlfriend," <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't mind it. They thought that was wow. hilarious. They loved it. it. Hey, Len, is your mom still around? Oh, yeah, yeah. She's 95 years old. She lives in Nevada. Wow. Yeah. That'd be wow. an awesome podcast right there. Oh, my God. I've been trying to get her on camera for years. She won't do it. She <laughs> won't. I feel like I have to hide it in my pocket or something. And I'm just, just getting to the point where conceivably I could date her. <laughs> <laughs> if, I showed, if I showed you a picture of her when she was in her 20s and 30s, you'd just go, holy moly. She yeah. was, she oh, was, I sent you pictures of Marjorie in her 20s and 30s. Yeah, <laughs> she was a hot mama, right? Right, mm -hmm. and she's pretty hot today. <laughs> yeah, right. I, mean, I love the hair. The hair looks great. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I just yeah. had a cut yeah. like a thousand inches. Yeah, yeah. What did you raise your hand, Paula? No, I don't. That was a thumbs up. I'm just oh, a thumbs up. A thumbs up. Uh, thank you, Paula. <laughs> I still have it. I'm just still getting used to it. So short. Mm. Not to it's, it's, true. Oh, it's true though marjorie's adorable um my wife when i came oh. home from new york she was she thinks she thinks marjorie's adorable she loves watching you two in the park um do your thing fighting and, fighting. and uh what, what do you mean I, in the park losing listeners yeah there you go <laughs> there you go well you gained one with my wife she doesn't watch this show but she will watch you two um canoodling in the park yeah. but uh i came home from new york and she's like oh so how's marjorie i said like you wouldn't believe it, how tiny she is, how gorgeous she is. You could put her in your pocket. That was what I said about her. <laughs> she's not that uh, short. She used to be six feet tall, but now she's eighty. So, I, you know, I said the same thing after you met her. She, we were talking about you the other day. She said Marjorie was just such a nice woman. You know, it was so nice hanging out with her. Like, that's when. That's when people are here when she when you leave. <laughs> yeah, entirely different thing. You know. She didn't say anything about you funny that about that. that <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I love him. He makes me laugh. He's my last chapter. I, uh, no, no, I no. No. although as Alex likes to say, I'm well into the index. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Bibliography. The bibliography. <laughs> Wait a minute. Think the index comes. What comes first, bibliography or index? Huh? I, I see. Come on, Marjorie, you're the one that reads books. Well, you don't go to the index, do you? Well, usually in novels, you don't have an index. Mm. I would go to I would go to books that were written about the broadcasting business, and I immediately go to the index and look up my name. And it's never there. And then if it's not if it's not there, I didn't buy the book. <laughs> so but anyway, uh, uh so so I don't like to get political here. 
Oh, boy. But, but when are they finally going to charge Donald Trump with with uh, January 6th? Hopefully soon. How much longer do we have to wait? He's going to wait till after the election. He's going to oh. pardon everything. Yeah. I don't if think he, he can do that. that. I don't think he can do that. I don't, think I don't know. To begin with, I don't think he can take any of those actions without the consent of Congress. And that would never pass the Senate. So, I don't know. Are you allowed to be on a ballot when you have charges pending? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, there have been a lot of people who actually served their term from from jail. Did you hear really? that, that felons if... can be elected? But he can't be elected after he's been convicted. Like he can't. Yes, can't he can. Convicted. No, no yeah, there's, he can. there's well, nothing, okay. in, there's well, nothing in the Constitution about being a felon. Well, I have to. I have okay. to inform him. This is not Canada. Right. And <laughs> here we allow people criminal records. To be in office and vote you can you vote after you have a a, a felony like that or if you've been <laughs> on the oh, that's interesting because you can't vote at, at state by state yeah okay that's what i'm thinking of that's that's, that's you know that's an interesting of. thing you can't vote you take right. it, but you can run bang on logical the great story is that you know who uh who were convicted of felony and never got to vote again George Burns and Jack Benny. Really? Oh, yes. wow. They were arrested for smuggling. <laughs> well, George, George said, I got this friend, and he has a diplomatic pouch, <laughs> and he can take anything back, and they never go and look at it. So all we do is we buy some jewelry for, you know, Gracie and, and uh, Mary, and we'll put it, have the guy with the pouch take it. Well, the guy with the pouch took it and they found the jewelry and they said, what are you doing? He says, oh, I'm taking this in for Jack Benny and George Burns. Next oh, thing you know, they're under arrest. Uh, wow. I call, I call it the big Benny Burns caper. I think somebody should write a book about it. Uh, and uh, George Burns uh, pleaded no low contendery mm -hmm. and, uh, and got a year plus one day in in jail suspended which mm. made him unable to vote wow and jack fought it to the bitter end and he lost mm. finally he got convicted in one year one one day and uh neither of them could vote i think for the rest of their lives wow yes that should man. be a b storyline in some sort of movie or show about old hollywood that should be a b storyline in there somewhere yeah that, yeah that's very cool yeah uh, Mandy has her arm raised. I'm just going to say peace out. I've got to go somewhere, so I'm going to cut out early today. It's good seeing everybody. Hey, Mandy. Good Bye, Mandy. You, Mandy. Always a pleasure. You always, you always make the panel look prettier. You just <laughs> want the attention when she leaves. She wants everybody to say goodbye to her. <laughs> Bye, Mandy. Bye, Mandy. Are you glad to see her go, Brian? <laughs> Well, Mr. Fashionably Late there, I think, is the same way. Bye-bye, <laughs> uh, sweetheart. Good having you here. Bye. Here we go. Yeah. If, we, if this were our gang, she'd be Darla, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It knows I'm just kidding, right? Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah. But anyway, oh, I just got a note back from Phil. <laughs> oh, oh, geez. Oh. Uh -oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I don't watch the the, the night show uh, very often. Sometimes I do, but is this Phil guy? He's a he's a, a Trump supporter, is he? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, nope. and I I don't mind yeah. that. You know, I don't mind that. It's it. What I mind is when I do a panel like this, if uh, people interrupt other people and don't give them a chance to speak all the time. A lot. Well, it, 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 with Phil, it got better when I called him on it once. And then after a while, like the other night, it was just ghastly, you know. Uh, and uh, what I solved the problem by just having him on for a half hour, you know. Uh, so um, he says he'll do that again. but uh, And then I get rid of him and then everybody else can talk. Mm. So, That'll be good. Is that a good idea? I, I'm asking uh, only two people here, and that that would be Charlie and uh, Brian because they're both they're both callers to the night show. So I was only on for seven minutes that night. 
<laughs> he still interrupted me five times. <laughs> yeah, you called late, right? Yeah, five or seven minutes. I just got on it. And he interrupted you five times. <laughs> Jeez. No, no. Eh. It it is some hard sometimes to get a word in. Yeah. So sometimes I well, try. I mean, I like I like everybody to participate. You know, except for, uh, of course, uh, Edward Berger. Of did, course. You don't have much to say, do you? <laughs> no, sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a voice that launched a thousand ships. That's right. <laughs> Smartest one of all of us. He didn't get married. Yeah. So what's happening? <laughs> yeah. Here, here's an interesting question. Anything happening politically in Canada? <laughs> yeah, like the the Trudeau government has a lot of people who are not happy with them for for a variety of reasons. So the the Conservative Party is doing a lot of work to mount an offense for the next election. Um, so there's yeah, I mean, I don't know. Is there anything happening? I mean, has, has yeah, political ugliness reared its ugly head in Canada? <laughs> I, I wouldn't say it has reared its ugly head the way that it has down south. Like the polarization seems to be smaller, but it is definitely there. Like um, the movement they, where the truckers ended up going to Ottawa. Well, those, I mean, those people are still around. Like every second Saturday, I'll see like 15 pickup trucks with Canadian flags, uh, you know, affixed to the side of them, driving down the highway, honking horns and things like that, because their contention is, is that our freedoms are being taken away. Um, something recently that just happened, though, because of the liberal government, um, you can't, can't, Canadian news sources can no longer, you can't share news posts on Facebook in Canada anymore. So there's a lot of people who are like, because Facebook's sending a message saying, hey, you're not allowed to send these anymore, and they're, they're just not there. People can't share this stuff. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of people thinking that, Freedom of speech is in jeopardy, and and so yeah, there is some stuff here for sure. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 are you more pleasant with your politics, or is it getting uh, contentious? I, I I personally am, um, and I think that there are a lot of people who are a little bit more. Well, you're a typical but... Canadian. You're 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 you're, <laughs> you're you're sweet and you're nice and you apologize for everything, and <laughs> you, have, you have a sense of uh, propriety. You know. Yeah. There are some people who are who are getting sick and tired of being sick and tired, and it's coming out, and 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 division is happening, and less listening is happening, and all of that. It's no. certainly happening up here as well. Um, though I would think down in the states, it seems to be, um, gone down the well, here it's a just, more yards. It, it, here the you know I mean, again you know I hate to say when I was a boy, but it's getting to that point where <laughs> when I was younger, you know politics wasn't as contentious. You know, it wasn't as polarized. And you get people who would, uh, you know, you, you get Republicans who agree with the Democrats sometimes, the Democrats who would agree with the Republicans. Now, just on general principles, they won't agree with each other, and nothing gets done. You know, nothing. The Republicans actually used my, to do Marjorie, the same part of mic is off. Your mic is still off. <laughs> Look, Marcel Marceau. Marjorie, and she's really going too. I love yeah. Marjorie, oh, nice! You're, <laughs> hold on a second, Marjorie. Your mic was off. Oh, <laughs> when they come back, when they come back, we're going to have to deal with a continuing resolution because the budget runs out September thirtieth. Yeah, well, that that happens. Yeah, happens a lot. We never just you and I never discuss a household budget, do we? Household? No. I don't think we ever have. You know, I mean, uh, uh, for instance, Len, you have a family. Do you do you ever get together and have conferences with your wife about the household budget? I I run pretty much most of the household budget, oh. but I will ne I will never make a major purchase without including her, obviously. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. How about? Uh, that? How about you, Charlene? Um, I used to do it, but now my husband does it. But the same thing is we don't make any big purchases without, because my husband would be making a lot of big purchases. So. 
I guess, <laughs> I guess I would be seeming a little too a feat if I say that all our uh, household uh, business is handled by my business manager. Mm. You know, so I he pays all the bills. You know, uh, he doesn't pay my bills. Well, that's because you won't let him. He he charges more for it, but he charges a fortune. It, well, he and a lot of times he's done a lot of work for us too. Like, how long has he been? Like, how long have you had employee. him? At? He's been my business manager. Oh God, since he's a nine, business manager to someone's on social since security. nineteen maybe nineteen seventy two. Since nineteen seventy two, how old is this guy? <laughs> he's been at late, mid mid eighties. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if something happened to him, would you have to get another business manager or could you do it on your own? Well, we don't have that complicated. Uh, then why do you pay him? Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. <laughs> That's he, what Mark is trying to get to. Number one, he only charges us to do our taxes mm. a year. And that includes all the bookkeeping that goes with it. Okay. okay. And I have to tell you, there was a time when I was in pretty bad shape and he saw me through it. He even went as far as to take money out of his own pocket to pay my bills. Wow. So I feel a loyalty to this guy that I probably would not normally feel. Mm -hmm. and, and so my reason for keeping him has something to do with that. I feel a I'm, lot. in many ways, I'm still paying him back for that. Yeah. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a loyal kind of guy that way. And I, I, I just think he, you know, but uh, I think I'm one of his few clients now because I think he he's kind of cut down on the amount of people he's yeah, had. But he still has a lot of clients that pay pay big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were they all uh, in broadcasting or throughout different arrays of entertainment? Oh, different, not necessarily in entertainment, but for the most part, a lot of them were. He did people like uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, the guy who, uh, oh God. <laughs> my, my mind just went i'll remember it in a moment but he you know i mean for instance he was one of the producers of the concert for bangladesh and so he had a lot of musical people uh bombastic bushkin <laughs> remember that guy <laughs> but carson fired him eventually yes i believe yeah <laughs> uh, uh, joe bushkin what was his name what was his first name i don't i don't know is it harry Harry Bushkin. Harry, Harry Bushkin, and mm -hmm. he was he was really close as as uh, Carson's lawyer. He was just close to him personally. Yeah, you know, and uh, they I think at a certain point he got rid of him, mm -hmm. uh, and then Bushkin wrote a book. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Bushkin was uh, was it uh, was his lawyer for years and years and years. But you know, I mean. Uh, also, if you find a business manager who doesn't steal from you, right, you're quite fortunate. And this guy's never stolen a penny from me. You know, he's made money from me when we were doing concerts and things like that. He got a piece of that business, mm -hmm. uh, but it was all money that he took that I knew he took. You know, mm. whatever. So, I mean, but, uh, uh, so I still maintain him and I, uh, it's also because I'm lazy, you know, so he pays all the bills, all the major Your bills. I pay my bills. Well, he pays our rent, the rent bills and the electric bills and the phone bills and all of that, you know? So, I mean, he, he takes care of probably a great deal of, you, you say your bills, so you're talking about your credit cards and that's it, you know? So I pays my credit cards every month. Stuff like that. So, yes. Yeah, oh. I un I understand that kind of uh, a relationship. I I um, still send my taxes uh, uh, to be done by an accountant that that uh, that Joel and I had for years and years, and um, he's a friend. Yeah, and you trust him. And I I absolutely trust him, and and um, I know about his life. He knows about my life. It's a, it's a whole different relationship. Yeah, you know, my guy. It's not like of, just business. Kind of funny, you know. I've had to deal with this lawyer for this whole thing with the landlords and stuff, but when it's come to solutions to problems, he's the one that comes up with them. 
you know, mm -hmm. tells a tells the lawyer, "Hey, let's do this. You should do that." And he he was absolutely right, and the and the lawyer agreed with him a hundred percent. But my question is, too bad Gary doesn't have a law degree, you know? yeah, yeah, uh, because then all problems would be so. I, too bad I don't have a law degree. Next life, really. <laughs> I'm getting a law degree. I don't care what you do in life. You be a radio person. You can be a so singer songwriter. You can be anything. But if you're also a lawyer, that will always be in your favor. Absolutely. You know, because I just, there are times when I wake up in the morning and go, I wish I could sue the hell out of them. And if I was a lawyer, I could sue the hell out of them. I'd know what to do, what to fill out, who to go after. I notice that Mike is smiling. Do you feel that way, Mike? Uh, I'm just thinking about my friend who's a lawyer. Um, yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. very. Yeah, it's very convenient for him that he does what he does because um, he can file pieces of paperwork that would cost people, you know, five hundred or a thousand dollars. He can do it in his free time for free. So, yeah, yeah, what? Well, yeah, but they, you won't find a lawyer that works for free very often. Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, being a lawyer is, I, I, I wonder how these people feel like L Rudy Giuliani who got their law degree pulled by the state of New York. <laughs> you know, they went to school Starts for it. all that time. They learned all that law stuff. And all of a sudden, boop, <laughs> it's just pulled. My, uh, my stepdaughter is at Georgetown Law School. She's got two more years and she's going to come out and be a, a kick-ass lawyer. I'm telling you. Well, she she she's argued with me, and I think I'm a pretty good arguer. And I'll tell you what: after I'm done with her, I agree the sky is green. She's right. <laughs> well, you know, it, used, it used to be that if it, that every every Jewish mother wanted her son to be a doctor, doctor, or a lawyer, a, a lawyer, or a lawyer, but doctor. And today, being a doctor is not necessarily a money making proposition. It's a terrible job. It's a terrible job, exactly. And and. Uh, you know, how these people get along, I have absolutely no idea, you know. Um, yeah, I, I, that, that's got to be the worst thing in the world to be a doctor. Yeah. But lawyers, I don't think lawyers have suffered. I don't think during COVID they suffered. No. You know, well, my lawyer did because we couldn't finish our court case for about a year because of COVID. So we all went back into a neutral corner. Mm. So how, how, how's this all going for you today, Edward? Good, good, good. Everything's running smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! You've got it. You've got to send in your tape to to somebody. I'm working <laughs> on that right now. <laughs> are you? Are you really? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I were in a place, an animation house. Yeah, we're getting ready to hire somebody to do a voice, and I heard yeah. you. I'd actually make up a character for your voice. Uh -huh. Absolutely, yeah. it's, a, it's a great voice. It's yeah. the best, you know. Um, I always have liked it. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, let me see here. We have a couple of minutes left. Uh, anybody going to be doing anything interesting soon, like a vacation or a trip? Or... Going on a cruise in about six weeks. Where are you going? Oh, where are you going? Uh, out of Vancouver, uh, Mike. That's uh, your neck of the woods. And going to Victoria and Seattle and actually through San Francisco, where I live, and then down to L.A. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. Just, just Is it a position positioning cruise, Len? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the... yeah, yeah. Coming out of Alaska, yeah, exactly. You have to go up to Alaska first. No, no, we're just going to Vancouver, British Columbia. Yeah, I, 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 I told Marjorie that one of the things we got to do is take that Alaska tour. It's I'm ready for it. You yeah, you should. You should. <laughs> You've taken it, right, Brian? Yeah, we're gonna go. No, 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 no. We, I wanted to. We had it booked, and then COVID hit, and then we end up going to Mexico after COVID. But I want to do the Alaska, and the kids aren't too thrilled. So maybe just Adrian and I will go with you and Marjorie. That would be great. Yeah, do one next year. Out, do one out of San Francisco, Alex. And we're all good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Tell well. your business manager to get on it. Yeah. <laughs> Len, when are you in Vancouver? Uh, September twenty fourth. All right. Are you staying there a night, or are you just flying in and jumping on the boat? We're coming in the night before, late. 
and getting on the boat at noon. So yeah. All right. Quick. Okay. Well, I was going to say, if so, you have a friend in Vancouver. Yes, I know. I should have stayed. Are you, in what city are you in? I'm in Kelowna, which is about three and a half hours away, but we make the trek oh. to Vancouver all the time. I right. wouldn't make you drive that far, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, hey, listen, it looks like we're running out of time. Oh, look who just walked in. Here she uh, is. Oh, Her she nibs. Is. Her oh. nibs, Adrian. Yeah, Hello, nice. Adrian. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Okay. Well, look at the camera. Don't look at me. Right. <laughs> Starts her second her second year in dance today. Today's her first day. Oh, nice. Her schedule. She moved up all to the next levels. So um, yeah, that's great. Congratulations. When did it start? In, in the of August, something like that. Say hi or get out. Hi. <laughs> hi or get out. <laughs> That's a good yeah. father. Say, yeah. out, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But anyway, oh boy. She just, what, what is that all about? What are you doing with your mouth? She's looking at herself in the camera. That's why. Oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh boy. What, seven now? Seven. Yeah. She'll be eight in a couple months. And, and when she wow. first came on this show, how old was she? She was. Four, I think. Four, yeah. Wow. Wow, we've had her on. She's been on the show more than Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it's time to say goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Paula. Got to come down here soon. Hopefully. Yeah. And uh, Charlene, good to see you. Always good to see Charlene. And uh, to our good friend uh, up in Canada, Mike Chisholm, a big Love, farewell. I bid a fond farewell to um, uh, Len. Oh. <laughs> Boy, I, I just, I, I just became a, a became a, a, what's his name, the senator that went. Oh, oh, <laughs> Feinstein? <laughs> oh no! Uh, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> they say he's all right. Yeah, yeah. he's all yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell. Yeah. I just yeah. did a Mitch McConnell there. You did. Yes, you did. I, I just went and <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, Marjorie, uh, Len, and then Marjorie. Yeah. Your camera's sinking. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, Mr. Wallace. And finally, Brian and Adrian. Hi, Adrian. Goodbye, Adrian. Goodbye, everybody. See you next week. Thank you, Alex. Okay. Alex. Hey, Edward. Hey, hey, hey. Edward. Oh, Edward. Oh, Edward. Edward. Oh, shit. Finish yeah. me. You said. always skip him. I know. Good. I, know. He does every I time. skip him on purpose, and then I yeah. don't get to go back to him. He does and finally, every time. a big fond farewell to uh, our panel, and we're, that's our show, and here's this That's all, folks. No, no. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Oh, you do it. Too. Right. oh okay. <laughs> Mr. Berger <laughs> says goodbye by saying. That's all, folks. <laughs> That's okay, it. there we go. Bye, everybody.